great to have these artists here supporting us today. And now, um, please give it up for Claire Curran, please say it for and sovereignty of lawmaking inside countries like New Zealand, but it's also an attack on our ability to innovate. It's an attack on our ability to determine our own economic future, because our economic future is tied up in, in new technology and utilising our brains and our ideas and what the TPPA does is put controls on our abilities to do that. And for that reason alone, for our children's future and our children's ability to have careers inside our own country and for our country to be able to, uh, to be a strong country economically, we should be thinking very strongly about opposing the TPPA. much controversy. It was sort of seen as this opportunity, it was marketed as the opportunity for New Zealanders to get more access for our dairy and our meat products and uh, for there to be some sort of nirvana attached to that. But, it, but I, and there wasn't much public discussion around it back in 2009. But I was watching it very closely because it followed on the heels of ACTA. Now does anyone know what ACTA was? There was the anti-counterfeiting trade agreement that the technology companies in countries like New Zealand, the technology industry, people that cared about the internet, rose up and formed a coalition across the South Pacific, including Canada and into Europe. Because it wasn't US driven, it didn't get as much publicity, but it got knocked on the head because of the strength of that coalition that, that, um, that formed. Everything that was in ACTA uh, around uh, uh, putting controls on intellectual property, intellectual sovereignty inside countries like New Zealand is in the TPPA and works. And that is the thing. But the problem is that most politicians and most uh, people out in the community don't understand what the implications are. And that is why we have to keep explaining it and keep talking about it and build relationships with our own industry, our own, the people that care about the internet as part of New Zealand's future economically and also about our ability at schools and universities to access information and to do that without more and more barriers being put up. That is what we have to fight against and that is what I'm here to tell you about today. Yes, there are moves to extend copyright to 70 years, 70 years, which is going to create more of a monopoly on our ability to innovate based on information that's out there in the community. There will be more restrictions on, on our ability to access information within geographical areas on the internet. And there will be the threat and, and more than a threat of disconnection from the internet if you infringe copyright. Those are important things to fight against. But wait, there's more. Because the biggest issue that I don't think has been properly discussed yet is what is contained within the e-commerce chapter. Which is, uh, which I bet none of you have heard about, or very few of you have heard about. Um, the e-commerce chapter. This has been very. This is around the privacy of our data. There are provisions which limit a country, countries such as New Zealand, to enact provisions restricting data transfers to cloud-based services. In other words, requiring. 
put re restrictions on our ability to store our own data in New Zealand and also to control what happens to our own data overseas. So in the light of the Snowden revelations that have happened in the last year and a half, what happens to our data, now whether it's business data, whether it's our emails, our phone calls, our texts, what we do on social media, everything that we do that gets put up into a cloud environment, we have, we, under this agreement, we will have virtually no ability, no ability to control our, the privacy of our data, especially if it's being stored up in the cloud and outside of New Zealand. Those are really important issues. Data, what happens to our data is where uh, the new battleground is emerging economically but also uh, within countries that have wide-ranging impact and implications for us as a country, as a nation, as a sovereign nation, but also for the privacy of our own information as citizens and the privacy of our economic information. So those intellectual property implications are about our future as a nation economically and our ability to control our own, our own stuff. So what Labour says is we will not sign this agreement until there is a public debate, until that text is released. that agreement at all. And it's not just the TPPA. There's lots of acronyms. I've said another one, ACTA. Well, ACTA is gone now, but what was in ACTA is in the TPPA. There's two other agreements that are out there at the moment. There's one called TISA. TISA, forget what it stands for, I do have it here somewhere. And there's another one called the TTIF. Now those, that triumvirate of agreements are all linked together. And they're being driven by the huge corporates which are bigger than countries. And that is what If you can't do it in, in physically, write to them. Write to them individually as, your, as yourself and bring up their offices. Tell them why you're concerned. Don't give up. Do it to the National Party. One of the big issues is, is that they don't understand the implications of this. I've just spent three days in Australia. The same problem exists in Australia where the MPs don't understand what lies behind some of these issues. These are much bigger than political issues within a single country. Australia has, is in the process of signing up to a new free trade agreement with Korea. Inside that agreement is the investor state provision. They don't know what they're doing over there. Please don't give up. We need to double this, triple this next time we have one of these rallies. Please write to bring up every member of Parliament in New Zealand and communicate your passion to them on this issue. Thank you. of our democracy, multinational invested foreign treaty should not replace the Treaty of Waitangi. Excuse me, Mr. Key, but secrecy is not the way to do business that It's not fine to place our democracy and self-determination on the line. TPPA puts our workers' rights in a straitjacket, our health care in a straitjacket, intellectual property in a straitjacket, environmental policy in a straitjacket. That straitjacket does not fit the New Zealand way. This protest will not go away. Yes.
New Zealand can manage our own affairs. We don't need to put off big corporate heirs. Investor state dispute settlement leaves me unsettled. The Cliff Richard Corporation could ban music that was heavy metal. I don't want Buzzy B to be repainted grey, but it could happen under the TPPA. corporate interference, let's not forget that Anadarko has just renewed its five-year uh, license to explore deep sea oil drilling off the coast of Otago. So this poem uh, imagines what it would be like if we had a disaster like we had the Gulf of Mexico tomorrow. Poor black tomorrow. Tomorrow I stand on the shoreline, I see dead birds close by. If I walked along I could see more. But I can't move, my feet are stuck as that bear takes its final breath tomorrow. Black, black, the ocean is black. Back, back, there is no turning back. What have they done to the golden sands? What have they done to this beautiful land? I turn and look back. Everything look, looks green and golden. Everything is good looking back. Looking forward, I see only black. Looking forward tomorrow. Black, black, the ocean is black. Back, back, there is no turning back. What have they done to the golden sand? What have they done to this beautiful land? Coastline scarred and tarred, literally. For today, enjoy the gold and the green, the ocean blue. For tomorrow, it will all turn black. 210 million gallons of oil will scar and tar, literally. Black, black, the ocean is black. Back, back, there is no turning back. What have they done to the golden sand? What have they done to this beautiful land? Thank you.